everyone afternoon it's dr jen or dr baker from drjenmed.com i am here today today is what june can't even keep up anymore um june 2020 and i'm here today with the topic can or could buy my food be making me sick um so we are back we are out and about the place open up we get to go out we have no excuses and all of that and to be frank with you i find myself here realizing day by day that you know me medicine has done so much for us in terms of the technologies and the drugs and the surgeries and all of that but i find that we have been missing and i say we including myself we have been missing the basics we have been missing the foundation the foundation and if you build anything a house a hotel a pig pen <laughs> you get me if you build anything without a foundation the building will not be solid the building just will not be solid and the foundation of health one of the foundation pillars of health is our food you know and you know, funny enough, as Jamaicans, when people and people, brethren and brethren and sister and sister reason, we reason and we say, you know, we think of the food, you know, we not eat or we eat too much of this and it'll make us sick. We all know it on some level. But maybe we never have the right words, the right science words to say, to, to explain it. So today we're going to delve into it. We're going we're gonna to dive deep into could back my food be making me sick hi Kadian welcome nice to have you right could my food right and I want to just say up front that I applaud the government the Minister of Health who has made this thrust about cutting out the sugar in other drinks in other food and all of that you know and he's very very vocal about exercise i see him on social media working out and biking and walking and all of that and i just think that is excellent that our minister of health is setting this premise for health and wellness but here is my di dilemma here is my dilemma we have all the medicines we've ever had in the world we have it now in 2020 we have all the technologies we have all the surgeries robotic surgery um all of the, the interventions you can think about but yet people are very sick people are at the sickest they've been you see an explosion of what they call chronic diseases meaning those long-term diseases the non-communicable diseases, the ones you don't catch, like it's not contagious. It is exploding. High blood pressure, diabetes, cancer, um, autoimmune, heart disease, obesity, and we can go on and on. Parkinson's, dementia, autism, all of these things, multiple sclerosis, and we can go on and on and on allergies people have stomach issues irritable bowel syndrome Crohn's and we can go on and on and on and for the life of me the two not add up how come we have in modern times all of these medical interventions but people are still getting sick and this is my proposal to you this is my proposal this is my opinion the, the building a building on shaky foundation the foundation shaky so when a storm come there is nothing rooted in the ground for withstand the storm so when disease come we don't have a foundation and the foundation have to include nutrition which is your food all right which is my food let me just say, I am not a nutritionist. I have never studied nutritional science and get no degree in this or certificate. I, this, I, I do not. But I am a human. You are a human. I know my body and you know your body. You understand? You can know when your car working good and when it not working good. 
You can know when your pressure cooker pot not working good from when it working good. We, are, we can all observe with our senses says something not adding up. Something is not adding up. We might can put our finger on it and say for sure is this food or that food. But we know there is a connection with our food and our health. So all of those people who, like myself in the past, who want to try and play the shortcut game and, you know, don't eat properly. And then when we're sick, we want to just take medicine because the medicines really help. I mean, if you, you have an infection, you take an antibiotic, it clear it up. But we have been abusing this medical system that scientists have done for us. We've been abusing it instead of using it as a valuable resource. So instead of taking care of your body, you mistreat it with poor nutrition. And then now the doctor must fix it with all of the medical drugs and prescriptions, etc. Bad foundation. I mean, I talk to myself because been there, done that. All right. So when I'm talking about food on this video, I'm not talking about if you're vegan, if you're vegetarian, if you eat meat, if you do keto, if you do the Mediterranean diet. I'm not talking about that. You understand? I'm not talking if you prefer Kalaloo or Kalaloo is not good for you because Kalaloo do your blood. I'm not getting into that. I'm not a nutritionist. Can our food be making us sick? I'm not talking about food poisoning and gastroenteritis. You catch a germ, you eat something whenever cook good, the curry never um, burn out good in the oil first. Or, you get me? gastroenteritis going around i'm not talking about that kind of sick today i'm talking about it could there be a connection between the quality of the food we're eating and why we are seeing everywhere you go almost everybody one out of what maybe four or five people getting cancer it probably is more when i was a medical student when i was learning about cancer cancer was rare it was one of those diseases you got over the age of 50 or 60 dementia was one of them late-term diseases stroke heart attack but yet we're seeing it in younger and younger we're seeing these things in children we are seeing these diseases in children and yes we have some resources to fix them but something is wrong. Something is wrong. So let us get to the food. What is food? Food is meant to be a fuel for our body. If you have a car, you go to the gas station, you put in the gas. That is the fuel for the car to run. Remember in Jamaica because a bad gas. Thank the Lord. Remember bad gas. What happened when there was a bad gas situation in Jamaica? Eh? People can start act up and sputter, sputter. And them say it's a fuel injector and this and that. I don't know mechanics. But you get the point. Bad gas. Fuel is... The, the food is our fuel. Are we eating bad food? Are we eating bad food? I don't know. We are getting to it. I'm not a nutritionist. But I, you know, I'm putting two and two together because of what I have seen played out in many people's life. You know, when them change up certain things about them food. The foundation of health. So, our food is not, food is not just meant to be yummy and appetizing and food is meant to literally give fuel to literally feed our cells. Literally feed our cells. You understand what I say? The food is a fuel that is meant to feed your cells. So your cells will grow, multiply, repair what needs to repair. All of that. That is what food is meant for. Food is not because you love french fries and it tastes good. And you love pizza and it tastes good. That is not the purpose of food. Food is to fuel your body. Get it? Good. 
So, the problem now is if you are eating bad gas, bad food, it is not fueling your body, it is not fueling your cells, and it is call, it causing cell damage. Your cells now are getting damaged instead. Cellular process, processes. So the processes that your cells have to do, all of those reactions that your cells are doing inside the cell, between different cells, hormones, this, this, or do that, everything I get haywire, madness going on because of bad. Think about the bad gas in Jamaica, bad food. You understand? So it's not about empty calories alone, you know, and just that you're drinking sugar juice and it's just sugar and you're not giving it. It is not about just the absence of good nutrients. It is that our food is not good. A lot of us, our food is not good. And we get into the root of this because it is a foundation of health. And that's why I stand by what Minister Tufton has been doing. Cutting out the sugar, exercising, it is the same principle. Him understand that the foundation, them have to be there. Or else in hospital, them are going to pack up. Them are going to pack up with sick people. Good. So let me ask you this question. And I'd love to hear your response if Facebook um, comments allow. After you eat a meal, how your body feel? When you eat... How your body feel, how your body react to the food. Because when you eat certain foods, your body can react by feeling energized, healthy. You, you just feel good. Or, or you can eat a meal and you start to feel sick. You, you, you can't concentrate. Your brain feels foggy. Your stomach starts hurting. You feel bloated. How are you reacting to your food? Let me see if anybody can answer me, please. How, are, how is your body responding to food? When you put in bad gas in the car, within 15, 20 minutes, the car starts sputter, sputter. This did happen to me one day when I was driving from Ochi to Negril. Put in bad gas in my bed. By the time I, about half hour, within half hour of driving, my van starts, I know, you know, it never did fully recover, Right? So I'm asking you, how does your body respond to the food that you have been feeding it? Does it feel like you can concentrate, you can focus, or you have to sleep after you eat? Do you feel tired after you eat? Your stomach are hurt you? You're getting some funny sensation? Hmm? Beverly says, it depends on what I eat. Winsome says she feels sleepy. Now, between you and me, Winsome and Beverly, you feel like a fuel, which is supposed to energize your cells. You feel like a fuel should really be doing that to your body. Hmm? You feel like a fuel that is supposed to make your cells work better. Should it really be doing that to your body? And that is just after a one meal. You know, there is something called leaky gut syndrome. Put up your hand. No, forget. You're not in front of me. <laughs> if you know about leaky gut syndrome, can somebody just say, yeah, you've heard of it before? Leaky gut syndrome. And basically, you have some people, as soon as them eat, them start to have symptoms. You have some people, when them eat, them body sensitive to it. Them body sensitive to the food. So, them having food sensitivities food intolerances so them having cramping them having bloating diarrhea constipation all kind of stuff L i want to know research that i'm gonna do a video on leaky gut syndrome whenever i get a chance so you now imagine that you are eating something that is not good you are eating food that is not good for your body it's not good quality food it's getting into your intestines the cells in your intestines are allowing food particles, bacteria, etc., to see between the cells and get even get into your tissues and into your bloodstream. Stuff that should not be happening are happening. All right? I'm going to leave it right there so for now because I don't want to get off into the deep end. But the point I'm making about it is that the quality of our food 
the food that we are eating there is a direct link now you think about it you eat a one meal you feel away you imagine years years of eating bad food so it's not a one meal you know it's not that one time you go wendy's or burger king you know or you know whatever fry food or junk food or whatever process it's not a one or two time is years if you eat a one meal and can feel sluggish and whatever after and it not agree with you you imagine years of eating this food years what you think happened after a while to those cells what you think happened to those cellular processes that should be working in a healthy way but cannot because you keep giving it bad gas you care and I go pop down. Eh? That is what we call disease. Disease is when the cells stop functioning properly. They start doing what we don't want them to do. They, can, they cannot um, repair properly. They cannot heal properly. They can't make new cells properly. They cannot do the stuff they were meant to do. They are trying but the bad gas we are put in a vehicle, the bad food is not feeding it right. That is the premise of this video. That is the premise of this video. But we care, you know, you know, Dr. Jane, we go on levels, levels upon levels upon levels. So the next question I'm gonna ask if a meds out. If you are not Jamaican, meds mean to meditate upon, to think upon, reflect upon. Why is our food so addictive? Why when we eat one slice of bread, we can't satisfy? If you're a man sharp, you eat three, four, five, six slices of bread and you still feel hungry. Why is the food addictive? Next question. Why when you eat the food, your belly can't full? You eat half cup of rice, one cup of rice, two cup of rice, and you still cannot be satisfied. You don't have that satiety. Anybody with any answers? Why your body still craving food even though you say you just eat a big walk of food? Why are you still craving? Hmm? Because we are giving our bodies bad food we are not giving our bodies high quality foods so let will start this video at a kindergarten level so this is kindergarten and i'm going to carry it all the way up to maybe university in my words bad food too much salt in the food too much sugar in your food too much high animal fat etc let me go again it's a kindergarten you know we're not into kindergarten today too much sugar in the food. I've spoken about these things many times before. Too much salt, excessive salt. Too much fat in the food. That is kindergarten. That is what Minister Tufton has been teaching, um, advertising, and I respect him for that. But Dr. Jen, carrying it beyond kindergarten. So this video is for people who want to level up. People like me who say, listen, I've seen too much people sick around me. I'm tired of seeing sick people. I am tired of it. Young people with diabetes, people in their 40s with heart attack. Come on. I am on a journey. I am on a journey. I'll just be honest with you. I am on a journey. And once we get the knowledge, I'm going to share it with you. Okay. So... How has our diet changed? Number one, meal preparation. We are outsourcing prep, uh, the food preparation. We are not cooking at home like one time. We're buying too much fast food. When you buy fast food, you don't know what them put in it. You don't know what them put in it. You don't know where the food come from. You don't know. You buy, say you buy some fried chicken and rice and peas. You don't know the type of oil them use, them reusing them oil. You don't know much powder seasoning in it for make it taste good. Eh? You don't know if them using MSG and other um, chemicals like those powder seasoning. 
You understand what I'm saying? You do not know. You do not know. So they are just trying to put out a meal that tastes good to your taste buds, but it is not necessarily good food. It is not necessarily good food. So you keep eating it year in, year out, and then one day the cells can't manage no more and you get some so-called disease. So some people, it's not because they eat a lot of sugar and them don't exercise and them still get diabetes, them still get pressure, them still get cancer. Why is that? So I'm suggesting to us, we need to make the time to prepare our meals at home. Because when you prepare your food at home, you know exactly what goes into it. You know exactly what you put in the juice. You know exactly what you're seasoning it with. You understand what I'm saying? When you know, say you're going to cook a piece of beef, and you take out the beef, and you smell it, and you realize, say, boy, this smell a little touch. You know exactly what you're doing. You know exactly, say you're not going to eat that, or you won't eat that. You understand what I'm saying? So that is one of the ways our nutrition has changed, because we are not preparing it. We are going to box food place, fast food restaurants, like seven days a week. Not even on God bless Sunday when people used to cook. Stay home and cook. People now cook. I tell you, I live near um, Orchard Town. During even the pandemic, KFC full. Drive through my mean and all of that. Full same way. You understand? People, we need to prepare our meals. Because that is how we know exactly what is going into it. All right, good. We're going a little deeper now. Bear with me. We're going a little deeper. Now we're going to talk about the quality of the ingredients. The actual quality of the ingredients in our foods. And I am here suggesting that personally, I feel that a lot of our food, I cannot quantify the percentage, but a lot of our food is unnatural. <laughs> unnatural from the perspective that it is you know you, you know the antibiotics in the meat right the hormones in the meat or chicken or whatever you know different hormone hormone and don't I want somebody come on here and challenge me because I have seen people stop eat chicken and it helped to correct them hormonal problem you see young children, you know, they eat a lot, a lot of chicken and them breasts are bust before time. Early puberty. Are you going to tell me the hormones don't fill up a lot of the meats we're eating, especially imported meats? Especially the imported meats? You're going to really try and tell me, say, the hormones and all of that is good for our body? The antibiotics that they have to literally literally give animals right to keep them healthy you think when we consume that meal when we consume that meat you think it don't have an impact on our bodies it may not have a drastic impact the first time the second time the third time but years of eating this it accumulates it's a cumulative effect in my opinion in my opinion why I said that because when you start cleaning up what you eat in terms of your diet your nutrition you notice a difference in your body and corona is a perfect time because I was very diligent about meal preparation at home and you could see the difference you can feel the difference your energy everything you understand so what are they really putting in the, what the animals eating you know, what is really in there? So, a lot of the foods are not pure foods like how God would make it. Like if you did back in the day, our grandparents and great-grandparents, why are they never sick with so much disease like what we are experiencing now? Because when them eat curry goat, which was not very often, because they never eat, well, from what my parents and have told me and that generation, right? 
Them never eat meat every single day, maybe once or twice a week. But the point is that if they're going to eat a goat, maybe them all have the goat, the goat have eat grass. You understand? So it's a grass-fed animal. Not this whole heap bag feed and this and that and whatever. And don't get me wrong. I'm just showing you. I'm just wondering. Could there be something that we need to be looking out for? Right? Could there be something that is affecting the quality of the food? And we may not even realize it. Right? So we think about the hormones, the antibiotics, the preservatives, the food that they use to keep the, the, the shelf life of the food or the, to keep the, the food lasting for longer. I remember one time I was in England and I remember I tried this experiment because um, that was a time it bust up on the internet with the fries from McDonald's that would not spoil. Would not spoil. And I remember having the fries and I remember also I bought an apple and the apple would, American apple, and it would not spoil. And you just imagine those things that are going in our bodies that our liver will, will have to try and get it out of our body, kidneys, etc. But you now imagine years of consuming that now. Years. So a lot of the food, the quality of our food has changed. A lot of our food now is genetically modified foods. What do, does it mean? What does that mean, Dr. Jen? What is genetic? Me hear the word GMO, you know, but me not really know what it means. Basically, they have worked on the genes of that food to create in it a characteristic, a desirable characteristic. Maybe they want, maybe they wanted to make a whole leaf without um, a certain pests or insects not eating it. So them change the genes so it would grow a certain way. In other words, it has been tampered with. You understand? It has been tampered with. So it is not the way God make it. Now, things can change, you know, you could have, and this could occur naturally, so to speak, you know, but when it is done in a lab in you know in a science lab you know they create this what is supposed to be a better food that is you know that they can feed a greater a bigger population but we don't know exactly we do not yet know exactly what the impact will be on our bodies you understand we do not know for sure if it can be damaging and I know they are working on creating even meat in the lab. So one day you're going to have genetically modified meat. So this will come from a cow. It grow in the lab. You understand? Good. So we don't really know the full impact of those kinds of foods might have on our bodies. Will it be like the bad gas saga in Jamaica where mash up several cars? Has it been? Who knows? Good. And we remembered not so long ago the old plastic rice. Plastic rice. God, he knows what that plastic has done to people. You want to say, you know, oh, not going to go so really? When so many people have evidence that there was some problem with the rice, then them, them said there was plastic cabbage and this and that. I don't know for sure. But what we have to do is know that if it no go so, it go close to sun or so. In other words, we have to be vigilant. That's the whole point of this. We have to be vigilant about the quality of the food. And when you don't cook at your yard and you eat out on the road, you do not know the quality of the food you are really getting. You don't know. So now we reach, what we call it now, we reach what? Primary school level with the information now. So we already know sugar, salt, high fat, them something they're not good. We have to prepare our meals. We have to be vigilant about the quality of our foods. So when you go in the supermarket and you buy cereal or whatever, processed food and all of that, what are the chemicals that were required to make that food as it is in that box? You eat it at one time or two times, you get away with it. What is the impact years of eating this way? And do you know what is the funny thing about this video? I have spoke, we have, you know, in regular life, you talk with people and people know what I'm talking about. It's true. They already know it. 
But them not have the words to say, but your instinct, your spirit been telling you. But most people, you know, if you can't see it, smell it, hear it, you don't trust it. And the last part of this section in terms of how our food has changed. The farming technique has changed. The farming technique has changed. You understand what I'm saying? So we mentioned already hormones and all of that with the, 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 the livestock. But I'm talking about those crop farmers. Right? So guess what now? You want to buy, you want to grow your farm with sweet pepper, onion, um, tomato, pak choy, whatever, whatever. And, you know, you want to get a good yield, right? Because that's how you make your money. So guess what you do now? Guess what you do now? To maximize. What do you do to maximize your crop yield? You spray it up with herbicide. You spray it up with herbicide. Roundup, glyphosate. You spray it up with Roundup, which is a herbicide to kill all the weeds and all of that and to maximize your yield. Some of the farmers, they handle it. They don't even use protective equipment. They're breathing in this. This is coming in contact with their skin. And a lot of them have gotten sick. All right? They have literally gotten sick. A lot of them have various disease, neurological cancer. There was a big write-up in America about that school. Um, that, what do you call those people who take care of the school, the custodian people who you know, keep the yard clean and all of that? And he used Roundup for years and developed cancer. And he won this massive lawsuit against the, 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 the whatever company. I, I'll never forget that. Because I was like, wow, you never know that could have really happened. You understand what I'm saying? So the point I'm making is that the farming technique using this holy power roundup and herbicide, what impact is it having on the farmer and on the food? Yes, we know that you can use chemicals and you wait a certain amount of time and the risk from that chemical into the food is very low, etc., etc. We know that. You understand? We know that if you use a chemical on the crop, if you pick it same time, you have a problem. But if you wait the time, you have to wait, and you pick the crop, the level is so low that it is it should be safe. But let me ask you this: between you and me now, number one. You feel like every produce you buy, the people obeying the rules, number one. Number two, you feel like, say, when you eat this food year in, year out, year in, year out, that it can't do its damage. Hmm? Hmm? I have said already, research it for yourself. The Roundup, the Glyphosate. It is doing a lot of damage, especially in um, USA, but it is being used here for a long time because we know it as um, one of the things people use when they're trying to commit suicide. It is that deadly. It, it, it is so damaging and it is in our food supply for the people who use it. Thankfully, we have lots of people who can still go get mango still go get peer etc etc that is not affected by this but i i am wondering if the use of these herbicides also the pesticides insecticides all of that could it be in our food supply could it be contributing to some of the sickness we are seeing could it be it's a question mark could it be you understand could it be because if it is that chemical is known to cause cancer stomach issues allergies gluten sensitivity every a lot a lot of diseases a lot a lot a lot a lot so so much has changed from granny days you know 
granny used to plant a plot. Grandpa used to plant a plot of this and do this and work the land and raise, you know, whatever, and optimize um, the yield from the farm plot. They used to do that. Maybe use a little neem as the, the fertile, as the insecticide or whatever. But now we have these powerful chemicals that make the, make the plants, them, the fruits were bare, the vegetables and the fruits and everything look so pretty look so pretty you understand so when you now go into the supermarket or the market and you see this pretty looking tomato the patch how bungle pretty and big it is probably the, the that is probably the one you should not choose <laughs> what an irony that probably is the one that you should not choose the one you should choose and i've heard this from several farmers the one you should choose is the one where look little bite up, bite up and little, you know, not so pretty. Because the bite up, bite up one is because insects will eat it. Caterpillar, whatever, will eat it. The ones that were pretty when I have not a bite, not a whatever, is because the level of the pesticide, etc. is so high that not even insects will eat it and this is coming directly from farmers mouth this is not dr jen this is not me go on internet go google this no this whole video is coming from what when i when i talk to farmers okay so when you go because i never know this you know i'm a kingstonian originally you know so you kind of grow you know, Kingstonian style. So, the, you know, when them tell you how to pick your produce, the best produce to pick, the best fruit, the best bungla kalaloo is not the prettiest big one. We have no fault or blemish. It's not those. Understand what I'm saying? Good. Good, good, good. So our food has changed. The technique, the farming technique, how them, how them, the herbicide use, the, the weed killer. In other words, the weed killer, the glyphosate, the roundup. You understand? The food has changed. That is my opinion. It has changed a lot of genetically modified stuff. So now, you might be thinking, I'm eating my salad. I'm eating steamed veg. You get me? You think you're doing the right thing, but you may be eating a lot of these chemicals. You may be eating a lot of these chemicals and don't realize. And the Bible said without knowledge, people perish. You understand? So I think I have kind of explained what I, my, if you want to say my theory on what's going on possibly with our food. Because I cannot fathom why there is so much chronic disease, cancer, heart disease, this, that, that, that. And we say, oh, it's a lifestyle disease. Yes, it's a lifestyle disease. But I see people who eat relatively healthy are still getting cancer. And we want to blame, oh, it's bad. Even when their parents never have no cancer, they might get cancer. You understand what I'm saying? Lupus, rheumatoid arthritis. It's exploding. Like seriously, it's exploding. So could it be the foundation of our health is shaky? So here are some solutions. Because, you know, I'm, I try to be solution-oriented. And if this is one video, I am here by requesting that viewers of this video... Please, if you have any suggestions, please, you can message me on Facebook, email me, put it in the comments, because we, we need some solutions. We need some solutions. You understand what I'm saying? So here is what I've come up with. As much as, is, as possible, try and avoid imported foods. You understand? As much as is possible. It's not always possible. We know that. 
But you know, as the Prime Minister would say, um, grow what you eat, eat what you grow, something like that. Let us eat local. Because guess what? As bad as things might be, Jamaica still has, a, you know, the, the organic food availability in great abundance that has not been, max, has not been um, utilized properly, in my opinion. You understand? So when now a man have him like a, a, a few banana trees at him yard and him decide now to come out with him like a pickup van and him, him, grow, him selling him banana. You know, things like that. Those bananas, you know, those bananas were sweet and when you eat two, your belly feel full. It them not starchy, starchy. The natural banana. So let us avoid the imported foods. Step one. These are my suggestions. All right. Step two. Let us grow our food just like what um, the Honorable Prime Minister Andrew Holness has been saying. We need to grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Some of us too foreign minded. We're too foreign minded. We need to. We need to risk. Listen. They call it red eye in Jamaica. The pasture always green on the other side. We need to respect the Kalalu, aka the Ailalu. Right? We need to respect the pacho, the stuff that grow here. You understand? And I just want to point out that we used to be told, oh, certain things can grow in Jamaica climate. Almost everything can grow here. Rice can grow here. Grape, strawberry, blackberry, everything can grow here. So grow your own food. Because when you grow your own food, you can know, say, boy, the couple planting sucker where you plant five years ago and it growing now, you know you never put no chemical on it and you never do nothing to it. It's natural. You understand? So grow your own food. Know your food source know your farmer the person who you're getting your food from build up a relationship with the farmer or farmers support you know it's supporting local business basically you know but you are going to build up a relationship to the point that maybe at some point it might make you seem farm you can find out in technique what him doing and when you have that level of trust now you support him you support him because let me tell you when you start eating natural food you're going to eat less food because you're not going to be hungry you're going to feel satisfied so support the organic farmers and by organic i'm not saying that oh doc it's so expensive jamaica have all the organic right here now before i came on this video i said i just kill a east indian mango before i come on this video i kill the east indian mango natural natural organic don't have to be expensive in jamaica it does not have to be but it ha it takes deliberate effort to set up a network of who you can call me grow this we can give you some of this me, me have peer we can give you some peer you can give me some green banana you might have do irish it might do yam it takes a little coordination yes it does but what is it worth to you? What is it worth it to you to have good health? It, it, yes, it is easier for going to a supermarket and market. And I'm remember I tell you, you know, I'm on this journey right now, you know. So yes, it is easier for just pick up what you need and you won't get everything perfect one time. But we have to start think a little higher now. You get me? We have to get to college level, so to speak. Thinking and knowledge and understanding. He who has an ear, let him hear what I'm saying today. So we have to now get back to the earth. We need to get back to the dirt. Grab your lasso and come. The earth, the ground, the soil. You know, we lock up in the room. Have on my slippers, on my phone, TV. Go outside. Get into the nature. Get into the soil. Walk barefoot again. You understand? Go remember the bush. Go learn about bush. Observe the nature. See how plants, you know, how their ecosystems work. 
we have to get back to knowing food life <laughs> we have to we lose it you know because you know technology and this and that but we need to get back to it because we do not have good health to show after years it don't make sense what is the point of me having money technology this that that and i don't have good health what is the point what is the point i cannot enjoy it fully if i'm sick when you're weak and tired and i have no energy you cannot even enjoy what you do have you understand we need to demand better quality food we need to demand better quality food well you see especially supermarket their meat quality is so horrible at least you get a little better when you're going to the market and go to the meat market party might get a little better quality maybe you know what i mean but we have to now demand better quality food so i think i've said everything i want to say about food our food is our medicine it is a fundamental aspect of our health right we know the things to look out for now we need to try and eat as organic as natural chemical free hormone antibiotic all of them something as much as we can as much as possible work with a local farmer or farmers within your group within your community work it out work it out this is your your body is literally depending on it your body is literally depending on it you understand this explosion of chronic disease is only going to continue if we don't get the foundation basic principles right you know i have one word to all those farmers especially the big farmers medium-sized farmers listen i know you need the money and i know the roundup and the herbicide them and the pesticide them make your crops look pretty and make money but please know we are depending on you for our food this is for the farmers we are depending on you for our food please have a conscience you can't say you never know we are depending on you for our food and for the people who buy from the farmers which is all of us may we respect the farmer now when the man say x amount of dollars for a dozen of this respect him him have a family to feed too him have a family to feed too but if you keep talk down the man price him have to take some shortcut methods to make the money you understand what i'm saying that's why i said this video could it be our food making us sick is not the typical video it is make we look deeper than the surface you understand it's not just our genes that we get pressure and sugar it's not you know it's not just that i met we see the whole heap of cancer and lupus and heart disease and stroke and heart attack the asthma how could i forget asthma allergies food allergies this allergy they are they, we're not getting the fundamentals right the bad guess we go into the care of them is the same thing we're doing with our bodies with bad food but in order to have better quality foods we have to work together we have to work together and we have to put our money where our mouth is get to know your farmer support your local farmer that doing the farming the right way eat better and tell me if you don't see a, a difference in your health if this video has been helpful to you like comment share it i think this is a very vital message especially for the farmers and use it to see how best you can help yourself all right so this has been <laughs> dr jen from drjenmed.com until next week i'm hoping to do it next week wednesday god's willing 
I will see you. Take care. God bless you. Have a good week, okay? Bye.